up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz, and joining us today, as well, is Mr. Freddie Maloney, joining us for this series of the Nerd Gym Report this week. Fellas, we have been uh, given these rumors that Galactus and the Silver Surfer will be the foes for the Fantastic Four in their first film. Brian, as I read this article, this telling us about these possibilities, I was growing upset. Because it reminded me of Rise of the Silver Surfer, the atrocity that was that film. But as I read further, they did mention, and the possibility of this happening, which makes it better, Brian, is the possibility of a, a special presentation with the Silver Surfer. That calms the mind somewhat, Brian. Um, what are your thoughts on this possible rumor? And Freddie, I'll, we'll, we'll hear from you right after Brian, because I want to hear what your thoughts on... on, on this rumor and does it remind you of the rise of the silver surfer and and are you okay with it being so quick or, th or this being the first outing for the fantastic four and this being the full brian you know it actually reminds me more of the the route that warner brothers and dc just took with the justice league to be honest um it, it uh it does nothing to calm my concerns about this project and i think it feeds into something that i raised as a possibility with Marvel clearly in a slump, looking to make some changes. I speculated on the possibility that they would start to pull forward some of the characters and some of the stories to try to drum up interest because their upcoming lineups looking a little questionable. But this is not how I would do it. Mm -hmm. And to me, if you are putting Galactus and Silver Surfer in your inaugural outing of the Fantastic Four, I, I, I read that as a lack of confidence in, in the project and the family to carry the story on its own, which I think is, I think you already failed if that's what you think. I mean, this is a rich text. This is a really rich kind of family dynamic that ought to be interesting unto itself. I think Galactus and Silver Surfer as a relationship is its own enterprise. Like that could fill a movie on its own. And maybe you're right. Maybe the special presentation helps. But I don't want to be relying on a 45 minute intro on Disney Plus to justify the existence of what should be a massive tentpole movie for Marvel, but one that they cannot afford to fail, given that this Fantastic Four franchise has, has bombed out twice already. So no, I'm very concerned. I don't like the direction this is heading. And I just am concerned there's going to be room for all the things we need to have happen with the family if you're then going to try to push in two of the greater sort of villains or higher profile characters in, in the MCU kind of alongside, I, I just don't, I don't like the way this is shaping up. And it feels, I, like, it feels like desperation to me. I think it is what it is. It's a big time rumor. I don't think that they're going to do this at all unless they're thrown in Tim Story's face and say... Let's say, Freddie, it's not a rumor. Let's say it is what's supposed to be. Uh, the, the Their first... That will be the foe of the Fantastic Four in this first film for the Fantastic Four. This will be their, their foe. What do you think about that? Let's say that is happening. I agree, I agree with Ryan that it, that would be a, a sign of weakness for Marvel. I mean, there will probably be some fans that will probably say, hey, listen, this is how you do it. This is how you really do it, but I don't think they should go that route at all. I don't think they should start off right away and presenting those those two iconic, like you know, characters in this whole new reboot of these uh, Marvel's uh, first family. With the relationship between Galactus and Silver Surfer. That is a relationship that is worth exploring. Now, this special this special presentation could show. The beautiful Zen La, the the utopia, right? The place where everybody goes, where people go to find peace and 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 meaning, whatever. And this is where Galactus first makes his appearance to us as the devourer of worlds, right? 
And if you've seen Brian and Freddie, I don't know if you've seen the Silver Surfer cartoon. Um, I think the first episode where Galactus changes um, Norrin Rat into the Silver Surfer was fantastic, and they did it in 30 minutes. So this for, this 45 minutes could do something to certainly get us excited, but to then bring him into the bring them to the Fantastic Four to then be defeated in a movie just doesn't show the the proper attention that's needed for us to really get Silver Surfer and Galactus. Uh, but also, it takes away, Brian, like you said, that this this family dynamic that we want to pay attention to and that needs to work. So I don't know how you do that. Yeah, I mean, I think also, I don't think audiences want, right now, I think audience tolerance for this idea that I have to go to Disney Plus to watch this exposition dump about these other two characters to then watch the movie and the real story you want to tell me. I think audiences are already rejecting that right now from Marvel. So for them to lean into that with Fantastic Four, I think would be a financial mistake. And I certainly think it would be a critical mistake. I think critics would just be like, what is like, this feels rushed. This feels crowded. You could say, yeah, they don't get it. But like right now you can just see the the tides have turned against Marvel in both critical and sort of, you know, commercial circles. Like this is not the way to win people back. The way to win people back is by really casting the Fantastic Four, having real chemistry, writing that dynamic really well and getting people talking about the four of them as like, oh, there's this is new life being injected into the MCU. If all you're doing is setting up this like, hey, we're going to rush the confrontation with, to your point, this gigantic enemy who I, I also have a tough time squaring with like, so this movie comes out before Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. So we're supposed to believe that like Galactus and Surfer are just going to be either wiped off the board or they're just out there hanging out while Kang does his thing. Like you, you now are risking like those types of issues too. I, I it, it just... To me, the only reason you do it is so you get people buzzing to say, like, I got to go see this because it's my one chance. They're throwing everything at the wall. And they don't think they're going to be able to do a second one. I'm like, OK, but that usually right. doesn't that usually ends up the place where Warner Brothers and Justice League ended up when they rushed getting the Justice League on the screen. That's usually what happens. Freddie, I just don't want that feeling of <laughs> that dissatisfaction that I got from watching Age of Ultron that character being the one and done pretty much. I mean, we hear rumors that he's gonna pop up in uh, Armor Wars, but um, it was that, it, Ultron is a, is a, is, is one, is, he's a big dog. Galactus is a big dog. And for him to, we see him once in, mm. in, uh, in, a, in, in this special presentation, whatever that may be, we probably might not get his full revelation. I don't know, but it, it's just not enough time with these characters for us to spend with. Uh, I certainly will be in awe, but will we be satisfied in just seeing them and not and not really connecting with that dynamic and why it works so it, did, it doesn't work. So that's what I'm afraid of. Brian, if Fantastic Four, if they do this, I mean, we haven't even been introduced to Doom yet. The fact that we've been in... The cosmic, uh, in, in, in that space, in that environment, and no talk about Galactus is confusing to me. You could have had all these things in place where we would have been like, I can't wait. And those things just happen and you'd be like, oh, snap. It's not necessarily a surprise, but we have that like, oh, they're around. They, for me, Brian, they, they ruined, not ruined, but it's like, I, they show the living tribunal so much is like, uh, okay. Then they destroyed the whole. They made eternity a wishing well. Is like what I, I, I these characters are not being treated with that 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 respect, Brian. You know, we we know Matt Shackman supposedly wants to push this adventure really cosmic. The it mentioned sort of like the inspiration of like the '60s space show, so that's like Lost in Space. That, that I didn't say it by name, but that's what I, I sort of think of. But you can probably even throw like a Buck Rogers in there, something like that. And like, that's all well and good. But 
the other subplot to this to me is this whole VFX catastrophe that's going on because, you know, to, we just had the turnover with Victoria Alonso, which we have not heard the end of. I mean, the lawsuits are coming, you know, but what we have heard in the aftermath, which I think is relevant to this, is there's this portrayal that she kind of became this titan of the VFX industry where she kind of had like final post-production say on every visual effects shot. And if you, and if you didn't deliver what she wanted, then she would basically blacklist you throughout the industry. Like that's the story that's going around. And then this alongside that, what the VFX artists are saying was, yeah, but Marvel would never give us specifics. It would be like a page. Like, so like in the case of Galactus, or silver surfer, it would be a page that said, you know, Silver Surfer appears on board. Like that would be the direction. And then the VFX artist would be left to create that shot without any guidance as to the look or feel of it. And so that then led to something else that was rumored, which is that apparently some, it, it, there was a quote from somebody on the inside of Marvel Studios basically saying that like the directors don't direct these movies. We direct these movies because we do all the look and feel after the fact. Well, Galactus is hard. Silver Surfer is hard. If those look cheap, it's the movie is going to fail. No, please, 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 no. See They're not standing on strong feet right now in the VFX world. And like, you really want to swing that big and that cosmic on two characters that have to look tight and tactile and real in everything that they're doing? I don't know man like this movie's supposed to go into production like in the next i don't know what nine months like i i don't think they're ready for that they trusted a guy who did barbershop for fantastic four and now is in the hands that we had hoped these characters would be in for us to see its um live action revival and it seems this and Brian, this is something that we've been talking for, about quite some time. This this project doesn't seem like people want to touch it. Then ha well, they have the problems. Thing. That's the other thing, right? So we already know that you know John Watts. They changed directors, um, and we just found out in the last couple of weeks it's getting rewritten. There's a new writer that's coming in to redo. So like, yeah, like there's clearly not agreement on exactly what they want to do. Like it's, you know, we've talked about all the, the stuff going on with Blade and the multiple iterations of that. And like, now we're hearing it with Fantastic Four and it's like, they're up against that calendar and they got to get something going. It's like, you know, I go back to it. This is, you know, we'll see if James Gunn stays true to his word, but this is what he's talking about. Yeah. When you have this disarray on the creative side and then you have to go into production and you're not ready and you're not finished and everyone's not on the same page. Like he's saying that, I mean, yeah, he's right. Like, how could that not, on balance, result in problems or risks to the production? Yeah. 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 Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of um, this possibility of Galactus and Silver Surfer um, joining the MCU in a, in a Fantastic Four film. Um, I'm sure many of you are concerned as we as we are for this sort of quick introduction. You know what I always imagined that, and I was hoping for it when it was happening. That scene where uh, Tony is looking out into space when he's on the ship, and he's sort of like dozing <coughs> off, and then he opens his eyes and he sort of sees like. Uh, man on a surfboard or <laughs> a mention or a mention when he's on earth talking to the things that he saw a man on a surfboard it would have but th these opportunities it's like you have them right there and, and you don't cash in on them and now you do, you're doing a rush job and that's the, that's what we're afraid of a rush job uh, let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report <laughs> Oh!